Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and in this video, I'm going to talk about a recent uh, peer-reviewed scientific paper that came out to try to explain why the Antarctica sea ice um, hit a record low in 2023. From up to about 2014, the Antarctic uh, sea ice was actually gaining roughly about 1.5% per decade. And then from 2014 on, there's been a sharp downturn and uh, we set a record minimum in 2017. And that record minimum has since been surpassed in 2022 and in 2023. There was, uh, so I'm gonna talk all about some of the reasons for this um, based on the Chinese uh, paper, uh, which um, discusses these things. But basically, there's a couple key things that are happening. The sea surface temperatures are getting warmer. The ozone was quite depleted. So something called the SAM, the Southern Annular Mode, uh, increased in strength. And that did a number of things. One of them was increasing, reducing the low level cloud cover. So more shortwave radiation could come down and both um, melt the ice and heat the sea surface temperature, heat the seawater around the ice. Also, the Coriolis force in the Southern Hemisphere deflects things to the left. So when you have a Southern annular mode sweeping around the continent, deflection or ec deflection um, is to the left. So the, that causes so-called Ekman flow, which is water currents that move outward from the Antarctic shelf. So that separates and thins the sea ice, making it more prone to melting as well. So I'm gonna discuss all of these things in this video. So let's uh, swing the camera around. And I've already mentioned uh, this, um, article here, Antarctic sea ice levels hit new record low in one of my videos previously, but I wasn't focusing on the sea ice. So that's what I'm going to do here. So first of all, um, what's happening to the, the uh, Arctic sea ice? So if you, if you Google National Snow and Ice Data Center, go to the main page, then you can actually click on the sea ice extent here. And what you can see is this is the Arctic sea ice extent. So, you know, at both poles, we're lacking sea ice, and this is very serious. Um, okay, so this is the um, sea ice extent on April 3rd. Um, you know, you can see the ice uh, growing back in. Um, you know, as we're moving to summer in the northern hemisphere they're moving to winter in the southern hemisphere so the sea ice is reforming this is the median ice edge based on the climatology from 1981 to 2010 the the uh, orange line so you can see you know the missing areas if you like um, this is a sea ice concentration uh, so 100 percent ice down to you know the blue is the fringes Okay, so you can see how it's how it's filling out. And this is the sea ice extent where we reach the the minimum down here. Okay, um, so in 2023 it was worse than 2022. And uh, the paper that just came out explains why 2022 was so low. So the same things apply to 2023 this year. You can see how it's how it's regrown and it's following the previous minimum path, 2022. Remember, this was the trend was to grow until about 1.5 percent per decade up to 2014, 2017 set a minimum record, and now that minimum has been pummeled by 2022 and 2023. Um, and this is this is the getting back to the Arctic. Um, you can read all about the Antarctic uh, ice sheet today. This is, you know, play around with the National Snow and Ice Center data. There's lots of images. You can see the melt days on the Antarctic Peninsula. 
and you can see where the you know the melt day is basically on the continental ice um, lots of lots of data here but i'm focusing on the sea ice so i just want to show you that this is there okay so this is the article um, that came out um, just um, late uh, last week Antar Antarctic sea ice levels hit new record low and this is what what it looked like so basically the 1981 to 2010 mean is the yellow lines that's the climatology if you like We've got the Ross ice shelf here okay so um, almost all of the ice in this region has disappeared just very small amounts here still ice here but it's backed off um looks like no sea ice in here or maybe a little bit in here um some out here where it normally is and i guess it drifted out that way i don't know you know it's missing there's little pockets anyway there's not much sea ice left and this is the day of the record low okay um less than two million square kilometers okay uh such a low historic minimum has never been observed for the sea ice that exists around it so on february 1st february 21st 2023 the sea ice surrounding the white continent antarctica reached its record lowest figure registering just 1.79 million square kilometers and and again this is the image showing that ice um, the difference with the previous historical minimum, which was just the previous year, February 25th, 2022, is equivalent to the area occupied by the state of New York. So we had 130,000 square kilometers less this year than the previous record minimum last year. This is the second time that we've been under 2 million square kilometers, back to back years, 2022, 2023. The interannual variability of sea ice trends were generally were generally rising before 2016. I said 2014. However, several years have recorded new record lows, including 2017, 2022, and now 2023. Okay, so here's the uh, sea ice extent for 2023, um, February 21st, the minimum. This was the previous year's record low, you know, and, and I showed you the data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. So any of this dot is kind of tracking around the 2022 curve. Okay, so, so this is not good news. Okay, so why is this happening? Well, in a nutshell, if you go open Earth Null School and look, I'm looking at winds at the surface, you know, there's kind of a smorgasbord of rotations you know look at all the all this activity here but if you look at the jet streams you can see the general flow here so what happens with this flow is because the things rotate to the left in the southern hemisphere flow this way rotates to the left and you can see it creates so-called Ekman flow, which is flow of water away from Antarctica so that brings the sea ice it thins it and it makes it more susceptible to melt. It results in less and less sea ice. The southern annular mode circling the continent is, was extremely strong, almost record strong. So a lot of ice was pulled away. Also, the sea surface temperature was warm. Um, when the water was pulled away, uh, water from below would upwell. And if it was warmer than the surface temperature, that would also contribute to the melt. Um, also, the ozone layer was was uh, low in certain areas so that meant that the um and the, the low level clouds were much less so because of, because of those factors the shortwave radiation was much higher in certain regions around the continent that completely wiped out the sea ice so that happened specifically in um in areas like uh you know in this region here for example Okay, so if we go to the uh, general paper, what caused the record low Antarctic sea ice in astral summer 2022? And again, these factors apply 
in 2023 when it was even lower than in 2022 by an area of the state of New York, I just told you. So this is kind of a schematic. So what we have is, this is uh, uh, July, August, September, sea surface temperature anomaly, very, very high. Um, August, September, October, we had the strongest SAM, um, Southern Annular Mode winds, which I just talked about. And those things are correlated greatly to lack of sea ice um, in um, the in in the summer, um, in in the sun in, in so December, January, February. So this this was the precursor. There was lack of there was um, not much ozone up above here. Um, there was so there was the unprecedented ozone depletion means shortwave radiation, a lot more came down. Southern annular mode gets stronger when there's ozone depletion. So there was more downward shortwave radiation, which heated up the oceans and created this, um, the, the, the temperature differences, creating the pressure differences, creating a very strong Southern annular mode. Those winds were whipping around Antarctica. So this set up everything so that come December, January, February, um, there was, uh, you know, there were Rosby wave trains coming from Australia, um, affecting things. Um, the sea surface temperature anomalies were huge. The, um, this is the Amundsen sea low was very high. So all of these things contributed to pulling away the ice and massacring the sea ice around Antarctica. I'll talk about this diagram again when we, or at least what's in it when I go to the actual paper. So of course, Ant Antarctic sea ice is a very important component of the climate system. Uh, significant, under global warming, significant changes in Antarctic sea ice have been observed. So, it, so basically we had a slow increase in sea ice from 1979 to 2014, and then a rapid decline thereafter. So there was a record minimum in 2017, a modest recovery, but then in summer of 2022, which is December 2021 to February 2022, that's Austral, Southern Hemisphere, Australian summer stands for, again hit a new record minimum at 3.07 million square kilometers, which was a 25% reduction from the long-term mean. Um, and of course in 2023, it was even lower. Um, and in 2017 was the previous minimum. So the combination of stronger positive sea surface temperature anomalies, so very warm water during July, September, 2021, um, the near strongest positive phase Southern annular mode during August to October, 2021. That's the winds whipping around the continent from west to east. Um, the very, very strong wind, southern annular mode, that induces a deepened and southwestward shifted Amundsen sea load, ASL for short. So the sea ice retreats via horizontal wind anomalies. Um, and uh, yeah, so the unprecedented ozone reduction played a role through the induced surface warming in the West Antarctic by increasing downwave shortwave radiation. So that increased sea surface temperature, melted more sea ice. Positive feedbacks between sea surface temperatures, net shortwave radiation, and cloudiness, right? There were very few low-level clouds to block the sun. The Ekman heat transport, that's because of the uh, southern annular mode whipping around and things deflect to the left. So it deflects the water away from the continent causes Ekman transport. So the water moves away from the continent, brings up warmer water from below, and that amplified the surface warming. warming. So all of these things uh, were into, in, interplaying. So this is the actual, uh, this is the actual paper now. Um, okay, so let's go to the beginning. So this is open source. You can Google this. So this just came out, okay? Uh, it just came out March 24th, 2023. It's talking about the record low Antarctic sea ice in Austral summer 2022. We, of course, we've just experienced 
an even greater record low in austral summer 2023. But, you know, it takes time to do the studies and stuff. So this is talking about the previous year. But the same things apply, of course. So the Antarctic sea ice area reached a record minimum during austral summer 2022, which is December 21st, 2021 to February 22. Again, this repeated this year with considerable loss in the West Antarctic. Based on lead lag correlation analysis, the record minimum was closely linked to the preceding near strongest positive phase Southern annular mode SAM plus during August to October 2021 and stronger positive SST anomalies in the maritime continent during July to September 2021. So very, very warm sea surface temperatures. Uh, the SAM remained at the near strongest or, strong, or strongest level because of the stratospheric cooling effect of the stratospheric ozone depletion, which induced a deepened and southwestern shift, westernward shifted Amundsen Sea low, causing sea ice retreat and horizontal wind anomalies away from the continent, pulling the ice away. This persisted into the austral summer. It generated deep convection over the southwestern subtropical Pacific, triggered a southeastward propagating Rosby wave train, deepening the Amundsen Sea low. The ozone reduction also induced surface warming. It increased net downward shortwave radiation uh, because there were low, there were there were very few low-level clouds because of the uh, you know the ozone depletion and because of the very strong SAM. So all of these things uh, fed in together and combined to so SST sea surface temperature, the net shortwave radiation the lack of cloudiness, the southern annular mode being strong, causing a lot of Ekman heat transport from the continent. So all of these things combine to basically slaughter the sea ice. Okay, so let's look at the figures here. So this is the sea ice area from 1978 to 2022, and you could see the record low here. And of course, the 2023, we just had an even greater record low. This is the sea ice concentration anomaly. So uh, blue is negative, very, very strong blue areas lacking sea ice in this area. This is the Ross Sea. Um, and then over by the Antarctica um, Peninsula, you know, lots of sea ice missing. And then around the rest of the con con uh, continent, it was kind of, kind of uh, scattered like uh, popcorn, I guess bit of both. This is a sea ice area anomaly, December, January, February. Um, in the Southern Hemisphere, you can see, you know, 1979 up to about 2014, it was increasing about one and a half percent per year. And then it dropped, it had a record low in 2017, another record low in 2022, and now an even stronger record low in 2023. Um, this is the anomaly um, of sea ice concentration with respect with respect to uh, longitude. So you can see, you know, the dip here, which is this loss here, and the dip here, which is this loss here. Okay, those are the dominating regions where there's sea ice missing. Um, this is the Southern Annular Mode Index, um, and you can see over here, very, very strong you know, not record high, but approaching record high. Um, and that uh, creates stronger winds circumventing the, the uh, continent. And that, be because the Coriolis is shifting, um, deflecting things to the left, it pulls the water and the ice away from the continent, greatly increasing the melt. Um, this is a sea ice area anomaly, and you can see uh, you know, the, 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 the maximum drop in 2017 and now in 2022 and now in 2023. But again, this paper um, just came out, but, you know, it takes a while to process all the data and stuff. So this is analyzing what happened in the previous year. No doubt there'll be a follow-up to say what happened in 2023. This is the uh, Amundsen Sea Low, I believe, here. 
Uh, this is the height anomaly, so low pressure, high pressure, high pressure, high pressure south of Australia, south of South America, low pressure here. So as these guys are stronger, this guy's also stronger. Um, this is the sea level pressure and the wind anomalies. So this is Antarctica here, the outline, the wind anomalies. Uh, you can see um, what's going on. Uh, you know, so the, the wind is very strong further out. Um, this is the sea ice velocity anomaly. So very fast movement of the sea ice being pulled away from the continent here. Also here, something here. Sea surface temperature anomaly, very, very warm here because very, very few low level clouds. This is low, this is a low level cloud cover, um, a huge deficit of low level clouds in this region here. Um, you know, 20% fewer, 10 to 20% fewer clouds. So the shortwave radiation in this area was very, very strong and therefore it warmed up the sea surface temperature anomaly here, also warmed up here. And this is the temperature anomaly on the continent itself. Um, and that carried over into this region here again. Uh, so this is the air temperature two meters above the surface. You know, so water temperature high. Okay, so it was a whole combination of different factors. And they try to put it together in this diagram. So again, um, what this is uh, prior to the record minimum. So July, August, September, sea surface temperature anomalies very large in this region. August, September, October, uh, you get the strongest positive uh, southern annular mode occurring. Um, you also get ozone depletion, so you get more shortwave radiation, which heats the water and increases the strength of the southern annular mode. Southern annular mode then um, zips around the continent and pulls the water away from the continent and the ice, contributing to these record lows. You get these Rosby wave trains coming down. Um, which uh, also, you know, depending on where the, the, the uh, highs and lows are of pressure, it creates, uh, it reinforces the, this, this southern annular mode. Sea surface temperature anomaly in December, January, February, extremely high around the continent. Um, sea ice cover, you know, is dropping. Sea ice concentration, December, January, February, dropping. Very, very warm temperatures. Sea level pressure. You get the um, minus and sea low, and it causes these uh, winds to come here. And you also get, uh, you know, so there's a net shortwave radiation heating heating up that area. So all of these things kind of combine to uh, cause this uh, record uh, sea ice area low around Antarctica, which we see here. Um, and this, uh, you know, so 2023 is even a lot lower than 2022, as I pointed out. Um, and so, of course, all of this is not good news for Antar Antarctica, because if you think of sea ice on the around the edge of the coastline as sort of filling in uh, fjords, etc., filling in depressions, then it can act as a cork holding the uh, ice on the continent in place without with less and less sea ice then you'd expect the glacier movement on land to increase in the coastal areas and you'd get more calving, more icebergs, etc. coming coming off. So it'd be interesting to see, I'd like to see that study of, of calving events, you know, not the huge major ones, but just the smaller ones to see, you know, how much of the continental ice is actually being lost from, from uh, you know, the different mechanisms, including the calving of icebergs, you know, melt water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so anyway, so this explains why the Antarctic sea ice is hitting record lows. You know, we tend to focus on the Northern Hemisphere and the Arctic and what's happening. Uh, but, you know, the Antarctic sea ice is getting at record low levels as well. And, uh, you know, I've just shown, uh, given a number of videos on how uh, the the ocean, there's much less downwelling. Um, you know, one of the mechanisms for, uh, you know, as sea ice is forming, you know, when we go into the, uh, into the fall and winter in the Southern Hemisphere, 
Uh, it basically rejects a lot of salt. I mean, the sea ice that forms maybe has about half or 30, 40% of the salt concentration stuck in brine pockets within the sea ice. So the, the, the water that is left behind um, right next to the freezing of the, of the water making sea ice is, is saltier water. It's cold, it's salty, it sinks down to below, but as the down below is warming up significantly, so that whole mechanism of southern overturning circulation is being disrupted. And I talked about a paper recently that talks about a, dis, a, a slowing 42% of the southern um, overturning circulation, and that's by in the next seven years, and a drop of the AMOC by 19% just due to that mechanism of the southern water slowing down, let alone other things that are going to slow down the AMOC. So, you know, the poles are, are connected through these uh, global ocean circulation currents. Um, so anyway, this is another piece of the of the picture, and it's not a pretty picture to, to paint. So please consider going to my website and donating to my PayPal account to support my research and videos. I've done an awful lot of videos lately. You know, please, uh, you know, kick a few bucks uh, my way and that will ensure I can keep, I can keep putting out these videos um, because, uh, you know, relying on donations as I do is a, a bit of a precarious uh, existence uh, financially. So, you know, if you've got, uh, if you like the videos, please share them, like them, but also consider supporting, supporting my work with a, with a monthly donation to my PayPal account. Thanks again for listening, and uh, we'll chat soon. Okay, bye for now.